So the Bismarck model is another kind of single payer that some countries have. It's like a social health insurance scheme. For example, in Germany, the first chancellor of modern Germany, Otto von Bismarck, which is why it's called Bismarck, um, introduced this really popular um, provision, the universal sickness insurance, which was based on these old practices of Prussian miners who would form these mutual aid societies or sickness funds. Uh, and so this was considered a foundational moment in the history of the welfare state. Eventually, this coverage extended to the entire population of that country. And social ins insurance has spread since that time through a lot of countries. In 1958, Japan passed their national health insurance law, universally guaranteeing insurance to Japanese citizens. Uh, in other countries like South Korea and Taiwan, developed single-payer systems as well, late into the 20th century, and many countries in continental Europe, including France, Switzerland, and the Netherlands, have evolved similar, uh, under similar conditions. So there are these three key traits of the Bismarck healthcare system. The first is universal insurance. So everybody is covered, whether it's through an employer or through government um, plans, and no one is denied insurance based on an inability to pay or their health status. Another is community rating. Everybody pays the same amount. Insurance is financed through taxes on the basis of your income and is not financed based on your health status. It's not a risk rated premium. Uh, in this way, the rich and the healthy subsidize the poor and the sick. And the insurance system itself operates under managed competition. So it's heavily regulated insurance systems. And the healthcare itself is private and also heavily regulated. So many of the hospitals are private under these kinds of systems. Physicians operate privately. They're not direct employees of the government. And yet prices are set by the government in negotiation with these providers. So the private providers have to um, accept whatever prices end up being set by the government. So it's kind of a balance between solidarity and liberty. Um, the poorest and sickest are supported by the system with subsidized coverage for people who are least able to afford it and those who need it the most. And the subsidy is borne by the wealthiest and healthiest. So it's kind of um, solidarity in that sense, you know, whether then they're paying through high taxes and through actuarially unfair premiums, you know, paying more than the expected amount that they will draw out. So that keeps the system afloat. But there is still broad leeway in terms of what doctors and hospitals, patients want to choose, and how doctors decide you know, where they're going to operate. So there's a number of countries that have this kind of model, and they vary you know, to some extent. So in Germany, you choose an insurance plan, um, but there are all these nonprofit nominally private but extensively regulated sickness funds. Um, premiums are collected as payroll taxes as a percentage of your household income. And patients and insurers are free to form networks with healthcare providers who uh, compete to attract them. So providers are competing on the basis of quality and not price because prices are set in those negotiations. Switzerland's system closely resembles Germany's in that insurers are heavily regulated and they compete to attract customers. Um, customers are also required to purchase coverage. Switzerland also has like pioneered some managed care tactics like what we've talked about with HMOs. Switzerland itself faces pretty heavy health policy challenges. They tend to be the number two um, most privatized and also most expensive healthcare systems second to the United States. A pretty distant second, but usually consistently number two. Um, although they have subsidized health insurance premiums, those subsidies have not been keeping pace with the rise in premiums over time. So there's a lot of disparities in different cantons, kind of like provinces, let's say, just different like insurance market regions in, um, in, in what like the user price of premium is going to be. The Netherlands has a similar managed competition situation, except um, it's financed jointly by the payroll contributions and out-of-pocket premiums. Israel has a kind of, they have four sickness funds that compete in this managed competition model with uh, that also cover this universal basket of healthcare services. 
Japan is a little bit different because they have um, a lot of employer-based coverage. And everybody who doesn't have employer-based coverage essentially has like the public plan, kind of like if everybody who in the United States, um, analogous situation would be like if everybody who doesn't have employer coverage just got Medicare. They have one federal plan for everybody who doesn't have employer-sponsored insurance, but still the majority of their um, coverage is through like this employer-centric model. Still, patients can choose their providers. Um, providers themselves have pretty strict price controls like the other Bismarck nations. So that's kind of one of the defining features of the Bismarck nations is these price controls, but with a managed competition model. France has had universal coverage since the 70s. French workers really don't have choice of plans. All of the plans are pretty much identical, uh, but they do have a lot of choice in selecting their doctor. They actually don't have great coverage of ambulatory services, so just outpatient clinic care, um, but you can purchase supplementary insurance to fill that gap.